So, all right. So I will kick off with my question and it's something that's very personal to me. So in 2002, I watched Mr. and Mrs. Iyer and I rem it's a movie that has stayed with me for 20 years. Like I have not forgotten that movie, you know? And it is always, there's scenes from it and there are always times it comes back to me. And it's very rare for me for a movie to just stay with me. And this is not a political question. I'm not going in that direction. Um, so for the last couple of years, obviously I've thought about the movie more and more, right? Um, and I've thought about it, especially with the hijab row, because I was like, okay, what makes you look like a Muslim? What makes you look like a Hindu? Um, so if people who haven't seen the movie, uh, the plot is uh, basically this. Um, there, uh, there is um, a Hindu Tamil Brahmin Ayer woman who uh, boards a bus uh, with her young son and her parents ask this um, Muslim man who is a wildlife photographer to um, keep an eye on her. And basically the bus runs into um, a riot and a riot situation. And it is really about the relationship between these two human beings and uh, sort of uh, and her journey really, as much as his journey. And there are many other people on the bus. It's very much a microcosm of India. There's Sikhs, um, there's a Jewish man, there's an elderly Muslim couple. Um, I'm not going to give away a lot because I don't, I hope it's available on streaming. Can someone look, Sarah, that we can put it in there if it is, because it's such a brilliant film. What I really want to ask you about is, what is the relationship between these two people? I mean, and how does it, who are these two people and how does it evolve? Like, what is it, what is that journey? The relationship between Meenakshi and Raja, the Mr. Yes. and Mrs. Ayer. <laughs> yes, and how did you read that relationship and how did you read her and, you know, their evolving relationship? Well, they're perfect strangers to begin with and they only know each other for a few days, I think right uh, just the course of a few days when their lives really kind of change in such a dramatic way dramatic events um i think uh, you know uh, that's why probably travel is so important because ordinarily their worlds may not have intersected hmm. um and uh, i mean even if they had very you know upar upar se very much on the surface but here i think they got to um you know, because they went through some experiences and some adversity together. It cemented that. I think that they naturally also got along as people. Um, mm. the, unfortunately, you know, there are certain prejudices that uh, Meenakshi Ayer carried, which, you know, mm. she, I don't think she ever questioned because a lot of it, it's like, uh, you know, it's just cultural conditioning, um, you know, we all have a lot of even gender conditioning, how we are supposed to be as women, what kind of Indian we have to be, what kind of, you know, religious identity we're supposed to have. So she already had these preconceived notions, which I think she never really had occasion to question um, somehow. Hmm. And, but when put to the test, you know, with somebody who she knew and who she was kind of, you know, whatever, he was helping her out. I mean, it was an exchange of humanity, you know. Um, mm. And that is what really cemented their bond. And of course, um, in many ways, she saved his life. Yes, because she, that's why it's called Mr. and Mrs. Ayer. She pretends he is, you know, she puts the baby on his lap and pretends he's her husband to save him. Um, do you think that, what do you think the message was of that film? Is that, that people, uh, that, is it that religion isn't important or is that religion obscures it, humanity yeah, I think, or human connection? Right. No, I think for me, it is that humanity trumps all else. I mean, if you're mm. whatever identity it is, whether it's your gender identity or whatever, religious or national identity is making you harm other human beings or hate other human beings, then you one really must question that ideology. So in that sense, I guess that humanity trumps everything else. You are first and foremost a human being and you have to, you have to meet another person as a human being first. And then, you know, everybody has many different identities. Do you think that film could be made today? I mean, in a world where even Padmavat is sort of 
controversial or even a bombay actually i mean because bombay actually comes afterwards right bombay is made after mr and mrs ayer i want to say i mr and mrs ayer was i think 2002 so um bombay, i don't exactly remember but bombay comes after or three Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if it could have been made today. I think today uh, one has to be very clever oh. to make any kind of point, and one has to just uh, work with I don't know satire. Best country, best politicians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's interesting because it actually it's not really a romantic relationship, and despite that, I think it would be difficult. You know. maybe a bombay might be get made because it is a hindu man and a muslim woman in some ways mm. but um, mm. i think what i liked about the movie is that their relationship is ambiguous it's it's not mm. very clear mm. as you know it's just really a tenderness and a bond between them that develops i feel like there is some romance there ha right. huh, there is a spark but you don't really <laughs> show show it it's, it's there it's on the, the table right? no no but yeah but some of the best romances i think are you know just you know in the mind and aapne aap ko me basically um so yeah so and that was also your first english film yeah um that was yeah because you did a bengali film after that right yeah um, i actually did uh, two bengali films before mr and mrs ayer didn't i okay. yeah i think so yeah two bengali films one was ritu porno ghosh's titli mm -hmm. And there was another film I saw. Yeah, I don't know. Um, sorry. Oh, I think you're muted for some reason. This was my first English film. Yeah, my third film overall. I mean, as an adult, I did a few films as a as a child actor as well. Yeah, yes, yeah, Indira. I think as a young child. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. It's also your. Was that your first experience of being directed by your mother, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ayer? No, I had acted in a film called uh, Picnic, a telefilm she had directed That's called Picnic so. when I was nine, in and Hollywood. then there was another film Hollywood. called. Uh, there was another film called um, Sati, which also she directed um, mm -hmm. with Shabana Azmi, where Shabana's character is married off to a tree. Uh, yeah. Where I had a little bit role, and then you know I did my grandfather film Amudini. So I did a few bit roles here and there because you know my it was around me, uh, and um, that was my environment in many ways. So sometimes if they needed some little thing, you know, or they needed a, a you know actor a small part or something, they would often tell me to do things. So I'm not going to get into that because I really have a lot of questions. But first, I'm going to allow people to ask a question. Dravida. Uh, Javeda has a question about Kuler Achar on the Z5. Javeda, hi. Uh, you want to ask a question? Morning. Yeah. Good morning, in Konkana. I actually am hi. logging in from uh, Port Port near Portland and West Coast. You know, it's about 4:30 oh, a.m. in the morning. Okay. Oh wow. So I love this uh, AMA sessions. So especially, I'm a great fan of yours, and I love Thank lot you. of seeing Bengali films. My question is, you know. Uh, Of late, I don't see much of meaningful and inspirational films well in, from Bengal. Actually, okay, I saw this uh, recently some some film called uh, uh, Kular Achar on Z5. Kular Achar. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it. Some, I haven't yeah, watched. some of I, I was not really. Uh, it was not the class which I saw. It's a more some looks to me some put together. You know, some characters and so on and so forth. What do you think is happening? Do you do you think you will see some great films again? Like uh, Choker Bali, Raincoat, Mrs. and Mr. Ayer, and things like that in the near future, or what do you think is happening? Well, Mr. and Mrs. Ayer is an English film, but yeah, I mean, I think that uh, I, you know, I don't watch a lot of uh, Hindi or Bengali films, to be honest. I mean, I'll only ever really watch even English. I'll only ever watch a film if at least three to four reliable sources have told me it's very good. Otherwise, I don't bother. Uh, you know, this time is, uh, you know. Um, Yeah, it's it's our most precious resource. So I haven't watched a lot, so I don't know. Having said that, you know, every year in most languages, at least in Hindi and Bengali, I'm sure, every year there are a handful of good films. But one really has to be on the lookout. Like I believe Asha Jawar Majhe, uh, which I think won at Venice, if I'm not mistaken, that was supposed to be a very good Bengali film, for example. I'm just saying, but I haven't watched a lot, so I don't know. One, but one has to follow talent, you know. 
Yeah, and I think it's also, I think we always sort of bemoaning um, in some ways a kind of loss of talent and then you get this fresh wave of talent and a fresh set of movies and everyone gets excited again. I think these things mm-hmm. maybe come in waves, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, and I'm like that too. I sort of rely on the team to tell me what to watch and even that I don't really watch. So, but it's mm. really interesting to me, really. As an actor, you don't really watch a lot of movies. Why is that? Well, uh, there is only so much time and I also read. So I do, I like, and I watch, I mean, I watch things. It doesn't have to be that. I mean, I'll watch like, you know, a few Hindi, a few Bengali, a few English. I'll just watch whatever's good. So if everybody's talking about a French film, or at least my sources, people whom I trust are talking about a French film or an English film or a Bengali film or whatever, a Malayali film, then I'll watch that, a film in Malayalam. Then I'll watch, you know, I'll, then I'll seek out that film to watch. Okay. But I don't watch a lot. Yeah. And some yeah. shows, there are so many shows, you know, it's just, there's no time. Nobody has time to watch everything. Yeah. Agreed. Is it like me? Like I don't. I hate reading news because it just it's like job. It's like a job. <laughs> then I start like every time I'm reading something, I think about my job. You know. So actually, news is no. not restful. No, it's mm-hmm. just that I think that watching things which are mediocre is not worth my time. Reading things no. which are mediocre is not worth my time. So I want to watch the best of things and read the best of things. Ah, okay. So Abhay has a question. Um, hi. Um, hi. It's quite surreal to do this. Uh, both of me and my wife are hi. really fans of uh, your work. Uh, right from Mr. and Mrs. Ryan. So uh, it's, it's a great privilege to be here. Um, one thing I wanted to ask was, um, is self-censorship a thing when you, as an artist? Because now you're also writing and directing movies. And uh, how has it evolved over the course of your career? And uh, Thanks. another question over the course of the conversation, because you said you read books. What are your latest, uh, uh, what is your reading list? Okay. okay. <laughs> what fun. Okay. So first you were asking about self-censorship. Now, really, I don't know if I can speak for everyone else, but for myself, I have to say, see, when you're acting, it's not such a big thing because you really, as an actor, you're, it's someone else's words you're speaking. Somebody else is telling you where to stand, what to do, what clothes to wear. You know, it's everything else, you know, coming from outside. And then, but I mean, as a director, I can say that, and not just as a director, I think even as human beings who express themselves, there is a lot of self-censorship today, which I find that I perhaps may not tweet as freely as I may have, you know, a few years ago. Uh, so there is some self-censorship in that sense. Um, but also, like, I mean, not just politically, but otherwise, I mean, even in Death in the Gunge, you know, uh, the film that I directed, there's a scene where a young girl, Tani, is looking for somebody and she picks up his cigarettes. Now, originally, what I had written is that she places an unlit cigarette in her mouth. It's an unlit cigarette that she's, you know, because children are naturally curious. But I, uh, I didn't even shoot that because I was like, nobody's going to let me, whatever, keep that visual. It's... I mean, sad, but nobody's going to let me keep that visual. So I just made her smell it. Even that they didn't let me keep. Mm. Like the sense of what didn't let me keep the fact that she smells a cigarette. So I mean, I not even with a, with a disclaimer. And, uh, no, no, forget the disclaimer. It's an adult film. So it's not like children are watching yeah. it. It's adults who are watching it. And it's very unlikely that they're going to sw- get swayed by a young child who maybe, you know, the non-smoker. I don't know what they're thinking. You know, it absolutely makes no sense to me. So I feel there is a certain amount of self censorship, which is uh, un, un, uh, which is uh, unfortunate because I I think what is interesting is not the things which are always allowed and accepted, you know what I mean. Uh, often what is interesting are the things that are unsaid or unspoken, and unseen. Yeah. Um, Samita has a question. Samita about death in the Gunj actually. Gunj, yeah. Gunj, sorry. No, thanks. Um, I really love watching that film and I wanted to ask about Thank the transition uh, from being an actor to a director. Uh, what made you want to take that step and also uh, what were the challenges with that? And when you have gone back to acting after directing, has the experience of acting and being an actor changed for you? Oh, I was uh, looking for you, but I couldn't find you. Anyway, that's fine. Um, uh, you, can, you can put your video on. 
Oh, okay. That's fine. I, um, so you were saying that how I went from being an actor to a director and what that experience has been like and what it is now to act after directing, right? Oh, and the books, by the way, I didn't see. I just wanted to mention that it's on my um, Insta profile page, a books highlight, highlight section, which is just the books that I'm reading. I'm very proud of my <laughs> highlight. Um, so, you know, I never actually wanted to be an actor. And uh, beyond that, I never wanted to be a director either. Um, it's not like I was, you know, ever really particularly ambitious or driven and that I wanted to do something else. It's just that because I wasn't sure what I needed to do, what I wanted to do and acting kind of happened easily that I went with it. In the same way, I didn't really want to direct, but this particular story of Death in the Gunge, which is based on a true story, has haunted me for a very long time because um, uh, it's based on, you know, some true events. Uh, and uh, about a false prophecy and how you can make a false prophecy come true. Um, honestly, in my case, what happened is that I was very lucky, you know, very privileged also uh, in two ways. It was a double privilege because A, my mom's a filmmaker. So I guess in that sense, I always had like a mentor or a guide at hand. Like at any time I can ask her anything, whether it's trivial or foolish or I don't know, important or whatever I could, or technical, I could ask her anything I wanted that was really convenient. And also that because I was already an actor and I was already fairly well known, it was easy for me at least to get meetings or that people would realize that I'm a credible person, you know, as opposed to why should we trust her with anything. So in that sense, I had, it was convenient. It was still difficult to get funding because it was a, mm, not a very conventional kind of a setup, I guess. So it was, and, and I think that people thought that I don't know, it was dark or slow, I don't know what, but uh, it was hard to get funding to begin with. Um, but after that, you know, it just everything kind of, once we, it was very useful uh, also not knowing where I'm going to get the money to ever make this because when I was writing, it's very liberating because I used to think it's okay, nobody will ever give me money to make this film, so let me just write whatever I want. Or that anyway, nobody is going to watch the film, so let me make whatever I want. So it was very liberating and freeing, not having to keep, you know, somebody else invisible audience in mind, ki, oh, they may not like this or, oh, you know, so I never had to second guess anybody other than myself, um, which I did a fair amount. And um, after that, once we managed to secure the funds, in many ways, things fell into place because, you know, there are uh, there are things that you have to do and and and... I found, you know, like, for example, you have to prepare the, in your preparation, in your prep time, you have to create the world, right? What is it going to look like? What are they going to wear? What, are, you know, what are the interiors like? What is the light like? Whatever, a hundred questions. And all of that was really fun for me because this was, I was so consumed by the idea of this. In fact, I can still talk about it endlessly because I just find that story and that world very fascinating personally. So for me, it was uh, like, uh, and and it was great doing the research for it. And that really helped know the subject and the world really well. Because, the you know, doing research on 1979 McClusky Gunge is not easy because it's not like there are archives available on, online, you know. And people's memories are very fickle. Like my mother would remember one thing, my father would remember it a different way. My aunt might remember a third thing. You know, so it's, and yeah. So it was a very interesting and process. I really enjoyed it. And what happened is I knew my characters really well because I was, the, you know, a, a writer uh, on it and I had done a lot of research. So I, I knew what that was going to be about. So even if, you know, the different technical departments ask me questions or we discuss things, I would know, no, no, here it has to be night because of this. Or no, here he's just going to find out something. So it has to be like this. Or, or here I want to get a lonely feeling in the frame, you know, so it would help. And then there are other HODs, you know, whom I chose well, who really supported me with that and who contributed greatly. And I think the second part of her question is that has it now turned change how you experience filmmaking as an actor, having been a director? I think a little bit. I hate to admit it. And I've always been a very cooperative and accommodating person. <laughs> but I think after uh, uh, having had the experience of direction, I I am much more cooperative. I, I'm more than cooperative. I think I would say I'm more cheerful than I may have been in the past. Uh, you know? Um, so, yeah, I think that... that um, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that the acting work is easier, but I, it's, it's, I think it can be less overwhelming because, uh, so I am a little more understanding and forgiving of film sets and film crews than I may have been previously. 
So Nivedita has a question about lipstick under my burqa. Nivedita? Mm -hmm. Yes. Hello, Kumbhana. Hi. So over the years, I've watched a lot of your films, Hindi mostly. I'm not a Bengali person. And I just got the access to streaming services. So uh, when I watched Lipstick Under My Burka, I was 17. I was in class 11. So that was an introduction to so many things I'd never even thought of. And uh, especially with your character and right now the main issue itself is about marital rape so much. So, I mean, can you speak more about what happened and what your thought processes were going into that? Because that film as a whole was completely eye-opening for me, but especially mm. your role and uh, uh, Ratna Patak ma'am's role. Mm. You know, um, I'm glad you asked this because um, there are many things which are just glossed over in our cinemas sometimes, right? So we never ever speak, for example, of the sexuality of slightly, of anybody over 30, frankly, unless it's like creepy men. <laughs> so old, old creepy men. But, you know, we never consider the sexuality of an older woman, you know, even in her 40s, 50s, 60s, etc. So... Um, in that way, I guess, you know, uh, these things are important to address because, again, it affects us as human beings and it affects human behavior. Uh, marital rape also is there. And it's, I find it really sad that, you know, uh, we speak so much about uh, love in our films, etc. But it's just so one-sided, you know, it's just one aspect of love and it's never really uh, a kind of 360-degree um, view of it. Um, and that's why it's interesting because you know why the same things again and again so I, I personally find you know it gets boring so I think that's why uh, Lipstick Under My Burqa was um, had uh, you know a certain appeal that we were speaking about things that everybody actually lives with these truths in some in some way or the other like some of these truths uh, you know our inner worlds and uh, that is often interesting because the more I think you understand yourself, the more you understand other people, the more aware you are of yourself, the more aware you are of, you know, other human beings and their behavior. And that is something that I think Lipstick Under My Burka does to a certain extent. Great. Uh, there are lots of questions. So I'm a little hurrying along because I know you only have a certain amount of time. Uh, Saradrita wants to talk about Niti in 15 Park Avenue. Sanadrita, you want to ask your question? Hi. Hey, uh, Hi. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, you are. Hi, Konkuna. So I'm Shamadrita Hi. and a couple of times before this meet, we interacted via Instagram. I posted some of uh, your content on my feed and you like that. Apart Thank from you. That, Apart from that, I would like to mention that I'm a huge fan of Aparna Ma'am and through her, I got to know about you. So basically, I want to know more about the fact that, yes, there are challenging roles in our film industry uh, as far as psychological terms and notions are concerned. And one, I would like to say that a fantastic example is Meaty from 15 Park Avenue. It's such a versatile role and such a dynamic uh, form you played over there. I just want to put a question in terms of that. It's like, that's a different notion or perspective in a psychological world and you are a different human being. I know that an actor's job is to prep for a particular thing and deliver his or her performance uh, in substantial mm. amount. But mm. does that in any way affect the human psyche or human perspective when you are preparing for a certain kind of role? Um so many thoughts are coming but anyway i'll just like shoot some off um one is that you never know how something has affected you immediately you know you are in this intense shoot for 30 days or more and it's not like on the day that you finish you immediately know you know the some part of that performance or some experiences uh, on that set etc these remain with you you know over time or maybe a diluted version of that character may remain with you some memories may remain and so you don't really know how that affects you in that sense uh, or where it might surface suddenly or how it might help in understanding somebody else. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, those are lovely magical ways, uh, you know, um, that life happens sometimes. Also, I have a close family member who's schizophrenic. So for I really had a, a 
close view of it in my life. I've seen uh, schizophrenia up close and personal. And so in in so it came in many ways quite easily in the sense that you know i'm also more of an intuitive actor i think that i don't even know like sometimes in the preparation for a role if i'm supposed to be a certain kind of person or have certain experiences sometimes i realize later without even meaning to that i tweak my life according to the part that i'm supposed to play so if i'm supposed to be somebody who's very confrontational then i may find myself in life perhaps i would have let something go but i might be a little more confrontational about it because i want that experience because i know i'm going to use it soon you know so sometimes those kind of things happen which is very uh, interesting and also quite dangerous <laughs> it can be <laughs> it can be uh, but yeah so uh, so in that and so preparation wise i felt that i had imbibed uh, you know and and there are many different ways that uh, schizophrenia can manifest and this is just one of the ways so i mean but this particular uh, person had had a deep impact on me so i had imbibed a lot of that uh and in in some strange way though she may not have an understanding of it completely i feel far more bonded to her uh mm. even after doing the film great no that really answers your question <laughs> yeah um uh tressa has a really interesting question about dialogue tressa Oh uh, yeah, I just want you've acted in so many movies and you've you know narrated so many dialogues. Is there any one which has been like you know your most favorite or the most memorable one out of all of those? You know, I forget everything immediately because <laughs> I I I mean yeah, so many lines one has had to learn. You know, oops, the one that I the one that I do remember actually is something that people have sa- said back to me a lot, which is. हसी बड़ी महंगी हो रखी है दुनिया में और समथिंग लाइक दैट विच इज फ्रॉम ओम कारा टेरिबली राइट नाउ बट दिस इज द वन डायलॉग दैट आई हैव हर्ड अदर पीपल सी सो दैट्स व्हाई आई रिमेम्बर इट अदरवाइज आई डोंट रिमेम्बर माय ओन डायलॉग आई मीन आई फॉरगेट इट लाइक द नेक्स्ट डे और लाइक व्हाटएवर टू डेज लेटर आह आई रेड समवेयर इन वन ऑफ योर इंटरव्यूज दैट यू फाइंड इट वेरी स्ट्रेसफुल टू मेमोराइज लॉन्ग हिंदी डायलॉग्स इट्स सॉर्ट ऑफ अ स्ट्रेस पॉइंट फॉर यू इज दैट ट्रू दैट्स एब्सोल्युटली ट्रू I don't know if I should be advertising it so much, but it's really true because um, I mean I am a Bengali person and I never really studied Hindi in school except for you know as a third language for a couple of years and then I went to an international school. So my Hindi is like I mean it's not as good uh, you know as I pretend <laughs> it is. <laughs> so I really just rattle it and learn it by heart. Well, that's funny. That's like every Indian student ever, right? <laughs> and yeah. then, I, then and I, I understand why it exits your head because that's what you do. You vomit it out in the exam, and then you don't remember it. That's it. That's it. Exactly. And I never had to do that in school. I was in an international school where we had open book exams. So I mean, I hate memorizing things. <laughs> um, Deepika, I think, has a question about your dream project. Whether you have a dream project in the works, something that you're like nursing, Deepika. Yeah. Hi. Oh, also, just uh, wanted to say, really big fan, and it's uh, kind of getting a lot of goosebumps just talking to you right now. But oh, um, sweet. Thank you. I, so, just wanted to know. Um, I mean, is there any idea that you see is missing out there in the world right now, and you want to fill that gap? Anything that you want to put on screen or on paper? Just something that you really look forward to doing. Well, that's very nicely put. If you're asked it like a dream project, I'd say no, nothing. <laughs> um, I don't know that. Um, well, I am very interested in motherhood. Uh, I've been a mom now for ten years. and i feel like i i feel like this that motherhood is uh, you know has a lot of uh, potential as a subject and it's not really been tapped into i mean we just they see it from like only a couple of lenses either like it's a very um, you know like the, you know like like a holy figure almost like an uh, unbelievably good mother or sometimes in horror films we use uh, you know children and their uh, mothers but i think that there's a lot to be tapped there which i would want to do i mean some of it i i want to, i i mean there are some things where I, which i'm interested in that particular area i don't know how when it will come out 
But anyway, I'm interested in ideas that, you know, uh, that uh, I'm interested in other people's truths, actually. So I'm happy to like even watch things like that. I don't know if I even if I couldn't come up with a script like that, I would I'd be interested in watching things like that also. Yeah. Also, That's if you don't mind, uh, there's me. actually a read that I would like to recommend. Uh, I don't know if you've read it. Please uh, do. Beloved by Tony Marcy. Yeah, no, I've heard so much about it. I'm ashamed that I haven't actually read it yet, but I will, yeah. I mean, apart I will. from... Thank you. There are a lot of other things discussed, but I, I really hope you like it. <laughs> I hope so, yeah. Thank you. When it comes to motherhood, actually, um, so I had my child very late. Uh, she's going to turn 14 now. I had her at 40. So I sort of dragged my feet to motherhood. Okay. And I tried to read books about mother. And this is in the US. This is not even in India. And everything is like about, about how horrible. It's about like, I understand it comes from a feminist perspective, but it's about like, oh my God, my entire life is about taking care of this child. I've lost my selfhood. I'm an angst, you know, like everything is like falling apart, blah, 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 right? Which I understand was like, you know, and it was a big thing that mommy let, right? At that point. And I was like, oh, and I was pregnant. I was like, this is not what I should be reading. <laughs> but you have the thing, right? But ah. even the feminist version of like, let's tell the truth about motherhood is like it's so depressing. I'm like, well, yes, I would but- rather I would rather be prepared because I don't think I got very much of that. I got the you know I'm the mother earth. Motherhood should oh. come naturally to all women. I mean, not from my own mum really personally. Yes. Also, you know, perhaps because you and you had your child later. Uh, mm. you know you had already possibly formed a very strong sense of self and a certain economic independence and even otherwise yes. you know um, which a lot of uh, young mothers yeah may not have because it can be an overwhelming yeah. experience for many but I think like the complexity of motherhood is absolutely not captured like I don't care yeah if- you know, you either have the mommy dearest version where she's kind of psycho or you have the mother India. I always say it's mother yeah. India, mommy dearest. Or it's like wine time for mummies. It's like, you know, where they're like drinking. Yeah, wine. it's just full of stereotypes. Hmm. Very boring. Yes. I would love to see something really lovely on motherhood. Uh, that's yeah. actually real. So, okay. Um, let's, let me not move, miss people. Okay. Um... Dutch has a really nice light question for you, which is not. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Dutch. Uh, thank you, Lakshmi. Hi, Kankana. It's a pleasure. Hi. I'm a very big fan, and I'm just amazed that I'm getting this opportunity to ask a question to you in person. I have a very simple thank question. Um, what What does Kankana Sen do when she has a bad day? Somebody so oh. famous, people looking up to you. What do you What What are the three things that you, um, you know, I don't look know forward to on a bad day i need to be alone and i need to eat and i need to read and yeah, I, it's like know. magic <laughs> i i just need a few hours on my own yeah just mainly eating and reading and ideally all together all three at the same time alone and eating and reading all three at the same time is just for me heavenly wow perfect that's very and i think it helps me to center myself <laughs> And being alone is difficult, right? Because uh, in a sense, if you're a mother, you're, it's either your kid or you're on a set and there are people always around you. So actually alone time becomes very difficult once you have a child. Yeah, that's right. And and, and when, I, you know, our lives, at least, yeah, my life is not always the same and I'm often surrounded by people or, you know, in the household. And so I, one doesn't get an, as much alone time, I think, as I need for sure. That's why I'm often up late in the night because that's really when the household has gone to bed. It's not work hours. So I love the night time. Um, So I think Kessa has one more question. And then, you know, we will finish with that and then I have one last one. Uh, Tressa? Yes. Uh, So, you know how in Indian cinema, the way women are portrayed... Like the lead guy will be like, you know, old, but the lead girl is someone who's maybe half his age. And I recently right. saw a movie where the, you know, the actor's mother was portrayed by someone who's in reality, you know, less uh, younger than him. So uh, what is your opinion on this? Like, you know, it's only oh women God. age I in just, Indian uh, cinema. I, no, I, this, you know, this is the kind of thing that I refuse to give my attention to anymore. 
because it's just i mean for how long um, obviously it's stupid but now what do i do <laughs> what can i do i just avoid watching those kind of films you know what i mean i uh, prefer to focus my attention on things which are uh, more meaningful because this has been said uh, you know a lot uh, and uh, i mean if you come down to battles i mean and you have to pick your battles this is i mean there are so many more urgent unfortunately a battles to be won and fought i mean this is a really stupid practice and it's a very misogynistic practice but then the attitudes often of in a film like that i don't think it is in any case terribly progressive or feminist so it's probably a film that i'm not watching i don't want to give it my attention um okay so here is my last question and you talked about your mother and um So this is this is one of the things I thought. But you know, there've been there always ongoing dramas about dynasty, not dynasty in politics in Bollywood. There's always like, oh, privilege. You fall, you you know, you're born into a family. You have privileges. Uh, you know that somehow makes whatever it is that you do suspect. Or at the same time, on the other hand, maybe whatever. But I actually am interested in how it sort of shaped you in in a personal way, like having a mother who's you know he's mm. been a really sort of powerful actor director um you know because mother daughter relationships are complicated <laughs> as i do having a daughter um so i'm curious about and i know exactly like just because if i did something and my daughter actually chose to do the same thing as me it is not going to be an easy ride for either of us right um but at the same time it is also something that is a sort of She, like you said you get to ask her even silly questions you get to ask her the big questions but on the other hand there she is you know and you said that you didn't want to be an actor or a director so i'm really curious about that journey you know from a yeah. personal point of view <laughs> you know i as i say had my own private legend growing up because i mean she's like to me she's a legend hmm. and uh, she's just like such a strong powerful like feminist i can really so you know the most fantastic thing about her i think and there are so many is that you know she really is somebody who lets uh, you know who well to begin with she lives life on her own terms hmm. so that has always been a great example and a great template for me because i've always seen a very capable single mother who's working and who's living a very full life you know successfully uh, kind of managing a career and her household uh, you know and 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 a social life or you know a community life rather hmm. mm, i she had lots of uh, you know i had lots of masses her her gang of girlfriends you know hmm. uh, and all independent strong working women and i've just seen my mother play so many different roles not just like in, as an actress that i feel that it's a great template for me because i mean there many times it's like oh but i've seen this i've seen my mom doing it it's fine i mean i can it's normal it's natural i can do it you know mm-hmm. which i didn't realize till much later that's one thing just seeing her mm-hmm. uh, often fulfilled you know nobody is can be fulfilled continuously all the time and when you know one goes through uh, whatever cycles um she also is a person who gives a lot of space you know and that re- and also space to be your own person Uh, she used to say that she mm. says that her uh, approach to parenting is benign neglect where you uh, make sure nothing <laughs> bad happens but you let the child flower you know um mm. so and and i would go with her many places i would go with her go with her to film sets or edit suites film festivals abroad um yeah she used to be the editor of a women's magazine for many years i would go to that office and this office and just see her you know at work um she would play with me sometimes when i would pretend to be the, the director and she would pretend to be the actress etc <laughs> yeah and i would tell her what to do since a young age so yeah and 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 you know so she didn't really tell me what to think ever hmm hmm so it was easy i think for us to get along we never had any ego issues also i'm a second child you know that often helps oh really so you weren't some of the tussle time. may have been with my older <laughs> sister who was a bit more like how uh, <laughs> what who used to act a little more i was the you know quiet just quietly absorbing absorbing things 
So, so when did you decide to become an actor or director? That's not what you wanted to do. I eventually accepted it, Lakshmi. I just realized <laughs> that, okay, I am an actor and I just better, you know, accept it. Uh, because even after Mr. and Mrs. Iyer, I remember looking for jobs in the, in the uh, classifieds at that time. And I was very young. I must have been 23 or something. And, and then, um, then I won a national award. So then after that, there was no looking back because that got me a lot of national uh, level attention, you know, and a lot of film offers. So I just kept going along thinking that, okay, I'll get a job down the line. I'll get a job. And that never happened. <laughs> so you just happened to be really good at it, you know, and that's, that's and it. lucky as well. Yeah. Yeah, a no. lot of it is luck because there are many, many more talented people who have not gotten a break. It happens, unfortunately. Yes. Yes, no, and for sure, and especially we already have a lopsided society, so why wouldn't our film industry also be lopsided, right, in terms of opportunities and things like that, um, but it has gotten better, I think, in terms of people trying to get, you know, uh, in, but, um, so it's interesting okay. though, so I, it, it gives me hope and faith that, you know, my daughter won't think that what I do is completely crap. It's like her one thing on her thing is like whatever she does, she's not going to be a journalist. She's like, no. Oh. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see in 10 years' time. Yes. Yes. At 14, apparently she, you know, she wants to be a corporate lawyer and make lots of money. What does that tell you about really? her judgment about my life? <laughs> like, I don't think it has huh. anything to do with your life. I don't think it has anything to do with your life. <laughs> and I'm like, really? And she's only 14. <laughs> I know. I wanted to be an air hostess at that age, which I think, like, you know, sort of, which horrified my mother, but she didn't say anything. But I, I wonder, so you, you're, you have a son, right? Yeah. So how is that? That's different, right? So you have a son, and is that a different, different from? Having a daughter. From? It's, it's a different... But I don't have a daughter, so I don't have anything to compare it to. Um, but it's fun having a son, I guess. I mean, there are things that, you know, you can talk about. I mean, it's the same, I think, with any child, whether it's a daughter or a son. Um, I don't feel my femaleness at the front and center of my identity. I don't often, oh, really? I don't always, yeah. just, no, I don't feel like female all the time or anything. I mean, I feel kind of sometimes just neutral, you know. Um, and I don't think like gender always comes through like front and center in interaction. Not always, sometimes. Yeah, Depending. and that's interesting to me. Because, you know, because if you have a daughter, in some ways, you always kind of have to go back to your relationship with... So when she's 13 and screaming at you, you're like, huh, did I do that with my mother? You know, <laughs> in that sense. Right. Um, I think that would happen with, the, with uh, you know, any teenager, I suspect. Hmm, I probably. hope not. Because <laughs> mine's 11 and those years are coming. <laughs> So what are you looking forward to next? I know like you're doing your first streaming series on Amazon Prime, is it? Um, Mumbai Diaries recently uh, aired on uh, Amazon Prime and we're going to shoot the second season soon. And uh, yeah, so just some web series and thinking of things to write, um, thinking of a short film to direct. I don't know what I do. I just keep myself busy. I, I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just always feeling busy. So, like, what are you most excited about? Are you excited about, like, uh, directing again? Are you eager to get I am, no, I am most excited about sleeping. Like, that is my <laughs> most exciting thing. And everything else will happen. <laughs> some of it is scary, some of it is exciting, some of it, you know, it's different at different times. Like, it's not one continuous thing. Well, that's great because, you know, actually, even our team is very excited about sleeping. Every time it's their weekend, <laughs> like, oh, they can sleep. <laughs> There's yeah. no news. Um, it's so lovely. Thank you so much, Konkana. Thank you, uh, Lakshmi. Thanks, everyone, for having thank, me. Yes, thank you, everyone, for lovely questions. You are all awesome. You are the guys who make our AMA special. Um, so we're always so grateful when you show up and have fantastic things to ask. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful weekend. And, you know, subscribe to Splainer if you don't. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks All so right. much, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.